Hello and welcome to Wholesome Roots. Today I'm doing a video about five gardening tips in five minutes. This is a collaboration that was started by Jane Kelly and my dear friend Liz Zorab at By Their Farms has tagged me in this collaboration to do this video. Thank you Liz for inviting me to join along because this is right up my alley and one of my favorite types of collaborations to do. All right, so let's see if I can keep it to five minutes. Let's see. All right, I'm gonna try. Here it goes. Tip number one, don't bite off more than you can chew. So this applies to many different aspects of gardening and it really applies especially to new gardeners. If you're just starting out and you wanna grow everything, that's so exciting and so inspiring to others and it's so much fun but it can also make it feel overwhelming. If you've just started out gardening, it's best to get into it slowly, figure out what you absolutely have to try this year and grow it and get comfortable with it. And then next year you can add in different crops and you might even decide that you wanna remove certain crops from what you've already tried. So go slowly, don't try to plant everything all at once and just get a feel for the gardening aspect of things rather than trying to plant everything. So again, don't bite off more than you can chew. Good, I kept that to a minute. Tip number two, weed before they seed. As you have probably noticed that I'm not really good about that rule. I, not because I don't intend to be or want to be, but oftentimes my health has come in the way and I don't get to the weeding when I should. So a really, really important rule for keeping your garden weed free, as well as the mulch, is to pull those weeds before they go to seed. Many, many, many of your most common garden pest weeds are going to be annuals that will only be spread by seed. So make sure you get to them. If you've seen it blooming, you want to pull it out right away. Tip number three, succession planting. So this kind of ties in with tip number one of not growing more than you can eat at a time, more than you can chew, um, is like the squash. So you might love having fresh summer squash and zucchini, but there's not a whole lot of preservation methods for those plants. So eating them fresh in season is really the best way to utilize those harvest. So what I like to do, especially because we have such high pest pressures that kill our squash and zucchini so fast after planting them, we have to do succession planting with them. And when I say succession planting, I mean that I schedule it so that probably every two weeks, maybe even longer, I'm going to go back into the garden and plant another plant or seed. You're going to have a big boost of growth at one time and then it's going to die back so the plant doesn't live forever so it's a good idea to replant another plant and, and keep in mind that if it's a food that you guys really like and will eat every day of the week for the entire summer by all means plant all of it at once but keep in mind that if pest situation happens or a strange weather storm comes through and damages the plants it's a good idea to have something as a backup and to replant some new seeds along the summer growing season. Okay, tip number four, more perennials sooner. The sooner you can get your perennials planted in your garden, the better and more of them. They are one of the most amazing things that you can do to help save time and money in your garden is to plant as many different perennials as your family enjoys. We love asparagus. So we have three beds behind me here. All three beds have 100 asparagus crowns that were planted in them originally. That may sound like a ton of asparagus to some other people, but to our family, it's barely enough, barely. So the fact that we planted this three years ago means that this is going to be a great harvest for our family now. We're ready for it. Things like fruit trees, fruit, fruit vines, blackberries, raspberries, um, 
walking onions, anything, Jerusalem artichokes, anything that you can get started and established, because it does take a little longer for a perennial to get established. Anything that you can get started and established now, as soon as you start your gardening journey, is gonna pay off for so many years, and you're gonna get so many benefits from it. And I highly recommend planting as many different types of perennials as you can come up with. Last but not least, tip number five. Okay, this one might be a little controversial. Maybe not. Some people it might be, some people it might sound like common sense. <laughs> so my tip number five is experiment with your plants with fun things, but don't experiment with your plants for scientific things. Let me explain that a little bit. So for instance, planting seeds when you know that it might not be your last frost date and you think that the weather is gonna hold up and that you're gonna have a chance and that those plants will be fine. Go ahead, do that experiment. That's a cool experiment because our growing seasons are different every year. Even though there's a specific date of the first frost and last frost, those are not solid and set in stone. So experiment with your planting times. You might find that you can get an earlier start on something that you didn't know you could. Experiment with your varieties and choices of things that you grow. Definitely try out new plants that you haven't tried before. And more importantly, try out plants that you did try before but failed at. I saw a lot of videos this year um, on YouTube about people talking about things that they would never grow again because it didn't grow well for them. And I thought, that's sad. <laughs> and that is so sad. Every year is different in the garden. Every year has different circumstances. This year we had a drought. The year before we had flooding. I mean, you just don't know what you're gonna get from a crop in one year of growing it. You have to keep trying to grow something even if it didn't grow well for you the first time. It's definitely worth it. I have found many things that I thought I could not grow and it turned out it was just the season I was growing it in or just that year happened to be a bad year for that plant. I've been able to grow them successfully in years since. The thing that you don't wanna experiment with is science. And when I say science, I'm talking about your fertilizers and your pesticides. Pesticide covers anything from an insecticide to a fungicide to a rodenticide and everything in between. When you have a scientific soil test that says that you are scientifically deficient in a certain nutrient, yes, you should add that nutrient. But adding Epsom salt when you do not have a magnesium deficiency is going to do nothing but cause problems in your garden. And you might not see it right away because it does have a tendency to green things up. But that doesn't mean that it's good for your plants. Also, when you hear somebody say that neem oil is safe for a pollinator, I want you to know it's not. Neem oil can, will, and does kill any insect it comes into contact with. It's an oil-based pesticide. It's not just the active ingredient in neem that we are worried about. It's the fact that it coats the body, clogging the breathing pores along the side of the body, so that insect actually suffocates. And that will happen to your honeybees, your butterflies, your caterpillars that are going to turn into butterflies, anything. Neem oil is not safe for pollinators. So when you hear about certain fertilizers or pesticides, or you get the advice from somebody, make sure you follow it up with some scientific research from usually from an extension service from a university where they have the most up-to-date research being done. Getting things from just a YouTube channel or just a blog on the internet is not necessarily the best method for you. So keep in mind that science is extremely important in gardening 
as well as experimenting is. So have fun with the experimenting of other things. But when it comes down to the science, you got to stick with the facts and the university based research that's out there at your availability. And if you ever have any questions, please feel free to message me, get, contact us on our Wholesome Roots Farmstead Friends Facebook group. We answer lots of questions there about pesticides and herbicides and IDing plants and helping people with chicken problems or goat issues, anything always feel free to contact me and I'm happy to help give you the scientific facts because that's what I'm all about. I am real, truthful, and honest. Okay, I think that's my five minutes is up. Now I'll tag three channels that I would like to see do this video. So I'm going to start with my friend Jen at Sunshine Farms. She's got a wonderful channel. It's, she has a plant-based homestead and they are really interesting people. She's incredibly intelligent. And one of the things I really admire about her is although she is a very new gardener, well, not very new, she's been gardening for a couple of years, but although she's considered a beginning gardener, this girl does not play around. She has done the research and she has looked at all the facts and she uses fact-based scientific reasons for everything in her garden and it really shows she's incredible at her growing so go check out her channel see what she's growing and follow her along my second nomination is my friend josh over at the city stead he is an urban homestead who's showing you how to garden on a small scale. And he's really, really lots of fun. You're really gonna enjoy his channel. He's got lots of humor and he keeps it moving and fast paced and lots of fun to watch his videos. So make sure you check him out and learn some gardening tips from him, especially about garlic. And for number three, Kira at Homestead Dreaming. She's got a really great channel. She's doing incredible things on her small urban homestead as well. She's got great gardening tips and advice and she's doing fun things with quail as well. So go check her out. Check out all three channels and be looking out for their five and five video. Thank you Liz for inviting me to join along and thank you Jane for starting this collaboration. We'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.